we don't organize for things to be cute. We organize so that we can live more thoughtful lives, so that we have more time to do things with people and we're not spending our time looking for things that we can't find. Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is actually a collaboration with Organized HQ and we are all sharing our top three best organizational hacks, and I'm really glad that you're here. First of all, thank you so much to Organized HQ for inviting me to be part of their virtual conference. This conference will run from September 12th through the 16th. You can sign up for free down in the description box. There will be a link, and if that doesn't work with your schedule or if you want to replay some of your favorites, by the way, there are over 100 creators involved this year, then you can buy the All Access Pass and I do have an affiliate link for that. So I'd love for you to click on that if you're interested, but it is just like a dream team of people who are passionate about home organization. And I really think you're gonna enjoy the content. And I thought long and hard about this. And then I realized that the truth is here in my own home, there are basically three things that I do every single time when I am reevaluating a space. So rather than try to you know make these the best ideas ever, these are just the three top things that I use all the time, every day, to live a more organized life. One quick thing you need to know about me is I spent three years working for a large storage and organizational company. I designed custom closets for them, and all day, every day, as my full-time job, I helped people organize their spaces. So I became a lot more organized from kind of listening to what people's needs were. That's why I know that these top three things are probably super likely to work in your home. So the number one kind of concept we need to embrace is this idea of prime real estate. And when I say prime real estate, I mean those spaces in your home that you and your family go to over and over again. Generally, say in a pantry, this is gonna be the shelf that's like right above eye level to maybe the shelf that is at waist height. This is the place that is really easy to grab. This is the place that your eye goes to immediately when you walk into the space. So whether you are organizing your kitchen pantry, your refrigerator, your linen closet, your clothes closet, your laundry room, whatever it is, I want you to think about the prime real estate in that room and I want you to evaluate how it's working for you. Does that prime real estate contain the things that you use all the time? Now, throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing you footage of me actually applying these principles to this one cabinet in my kitchen that has been driving me crazy that I'm actually so grateful to you guys for you know coming along with me and motivating me <laughs> to get it organized. It's a space that has worked in the past but is not working now now and it's definitely time to reevaluate. Okay, so this is our cabinet in question. It is right next to my sink and it is where I keep the pots and pans that I use most often. And there's not a lot of them, um, but it is this group right here and I use them all the time and I need the lids as well. So this is not terrible. What I'm not loving though, is that there are tons of things in here that are just like, it's like random and I'm also totally not utilizing this space well. So this would qualify in my kitchen as prime real estate. And I'm feeling like what I need to do is make one of these for lids and one of these for pots and pans. So I've done step one, right? Which is identify the prime real estate, which is right. So if you'll do this in all the spaces of your home, I think we naturally have a tendency to be like, I'm gonna clean out the basement today when you're probably never in the basement, but you know, the prime shelves in your refrigerator, for example, are a complete disaster, even though you're in there multiple times per day. So we don't have unlimited time for organization and I'm really big on organization that works. So maybe save the basement until you move <laughs> and maybe spend that one hour that you happen to have on that random weekend to organize just those three shelves in your refrigerator or just that one drawer in your kitchen. Don't get overwhelmed, evaluate and determine the prime real estate and that is step number one. 
Okay, step number two is edit and contain. And what I find is a lot of us reverse this, right? We want to go out and buy really cute containers before we have edited. And many times in my old job, much to the chagrin of my boss, I would tell people to go home and edit because they would come in looking for containers and they would bring me pictures of their spaces. And the spaces were such a, a disheveled mess with so much literal trash that they did not need that I, I really felt that just buying containers, you know, I could easily sell them $500 of product, but it would be a misuse of their time and money because the first thing you have to do is edit. You have to determine what of these items am I actively using? What are uh, damaged or broken? What do I use daily? And what of these items that are here are things that I only use occasionally and need to live in a different space? I definitely found that to be true in my trouble cupboard, if we want to call it my trouble cupboard. I kind of like that uh, because there were things in here that I didn't want to discard of, but that certainly did not deserve the prime real estate where they were living. And there were things that I was having to move every time I went to get to the things like my pots and pans that I was using every single day. And I think what happens if we don't edit and then we just put things in containers, it might look cute. You might even, you know, post a little picture on Instagram, but it's not going to work for you because you didn't really think through what doesn't need to be in the space. So you want to edit first. And after you've done that and you've been brutally honest about what can be thrown away, what can be donated, what needs to live somewhere else that is not prime real estate. For example, if you're keeping your Christmas dishes there, no ma'am, those either need to go up on the top of a pantry, down in a basement, under a bed, someplace else, so that when it's time for Christmas, they can come out and be beautiful. But you do not need to be moving those Christmas dishes every time you try to get the casserole dish that you use twice a week. Let's just ask me how I know. <laughs> so edit first and then contain. So once you've determined these are the items that must go in this space. Now you're going to measure, you're going to think through, you know, what's the best size box container, whatever. I am super blessed that this particular pantry has pull out shelves, which are just a dream. If I didn't already have them, I would be working hard to figure out how to install them because it, it just changes your life because you can access everything. But you want to make sure before you go shopping that you've measured. So if you have really, you know, narrow shelves, there's nothing worse than finding a really cute container, buying the whole set and getting home and finding that they don't fit on your shelf. So always measure first. One thing I love is most of the websites now, including Amazon, Target, Walmart, Container Store, the measurements are right there for you. So it's easier than it's ever been to make sure that you're kind of pre-shopping and picking out things that you know will work in your space. And also don't spend a ton of money. I love the company that I used to work for. It is a solid company, fantastic employees, but a lot of their items are just wicked overpriced. I will link down below uh, my affiliate links for anything that I can find that I use. I have a few products from there that I have used forever. By the way, it's the container store. I don't think they care if I say I used to work for them. They've never said they care. Hopefully they don't care. Shop around because I feel like Dollar Tree has some great options. Buy good quality stuff, but this is a field where it's definitely worth your time to do a little bit of shopping and try to get a lower price. And you can also recycle things. I can't tell you how many drawers in my house, instead of like expensive Lucite dividers, have literally just old jewelry boxes. Um, by the way, um, any Apple product boxes, if you take out the thing that like held your AirPods, they make fantastic drawer organizers. They're clean, they're fresh, they look great, all of the things, and they cost you zero dollars. Well, I mean, the AirPods cost you money, but you know what I'm saying. So now we've edited and edited. That's hard to say. So now we've done our editing and now we have contained. Okay, you guys, it is done. Now I didn't show you the whole process because I tried like six different things, <laughs> but where I landed was that really the system I already had was working. I just needed to pare down to just the actual pots and pans that I use and the lids that I use. This should work really well. Look how close that is. It just barely clears, but it does clear. So we have our most used uh, pans here and the lids that go with those pans right there. Super easy to access. I should have said, um, I don't know what that is on the cabinet. I got to get that off. Real life, y'all. I should have said at the beginning that lots of people cook in my kitchen. So it, it's really important that it be 
organized in a way that many people could come in here and anyone could start cooking and kind of figure out where things are. So there's our pots and pans. And then as we move down here, the bigger lids, which really I use only occasionally are back there. It's not that hard to get to them. I use those really just like holidays and when the whole family's here. So those are far less used. So those are in the back. And then my glass storage containers are here. And it's gonna be obvious why this guy lives here in just a second. He didn't fit nestled in with the other Pyrex, which is, you know, rude, but <laughs> he works there. Um, I am slowly discarding all of our plastic food storage and either donating them or reassigning them to a different job, like drawer storage or things like that. But we're, we're trying to no longer use um, plastic to store food in. And these are glass and they do have plastic lids, which I still, I don't know, I guess that part's okay. Um, and I have two more of these, but they're currently being used, but those will go right there. And then over here, we have our um, water bottles, which I did decide to go ahead and leave here, so it's convenient. And then because of all the space I freed up, I was able to keep this little caddy with the dog stuff. Now we do have three rescued dogs on various medicines. I have one right now with an ear infection. So these are things I need to be able to get to every day. Um, and having them right here convenient is beautiful to me. And then here I decided to categorize all of my Pyrex. Um, it just made sense. And this is not Pyrex, this is plastic, but it kind of fit in the same category. So we have my casseroles and then my measuring cups. Funny story, I had to order a new one because this one is so old that you notice something, you actually can't see the measurements anymore. <laughs> I'm st I still keep it because I love it so much, but what does that say? That you've had it so long that the measurements are worn off. So I did buy a new one of those. But everything is very organized, easy to access. This is my prime real estate cabinet, and I am super happy with the way that it turned out. Now this third step, this is the thing that we all miss, myself included. This is actually the most important step because if you don't do this step then the other two are not going to matter you have to maintain the space i think every organizational video i've done on this channel and there have been many many videos i have said this same thing you have to go back and you have to constantly evaluate is the space still working? Because a couple of different things could happen. Maybe your habits have changed. Maybe, you know, you were, for me, I was a runner for years, so I had tons of those water bottles that you can hold. Well, thanks to stage four arthritis in my right knee, I am now a walker, so I don't need to use the, the handheld water things as much. So those don't need to be in this space. Or maybe your kids were in, you know, daycare and now they've moved to elementary and you're having them buy their lunch. Or, um, you know, maybe your kids were in the house and now they've left and you don't need to pack lunches anymore. Whatever the case may be, constant evaluation of specifically those prime real estate spots is so important to keep things moving. Remember, we don't organize for things to be cute. We organize so that we can live more thoughtful lives, so that we have more time to do things with people and we're not spending our time looking for things that we can't find. So with that in mind, constantly evaluating is part of the process. Now you're gonna wanna go back and reevaluate at least every few months, depending on how often you use the space. It might even be every few weeks, but you're looking at reevaluating in a way that it will maybe take you 15 or 20 minutes to kind of reset the space, as opposed to if you neglect this space, you're going to have to go all the way back to step one, and it's going to take you a lot more time. And in the process, that space is going to frustrate you on the dailies. I hope that you have found these tips helpful. Again, you can use these three tips in every space in your house. And I really love teaching people about organization because I do believe it leads to a better quality of life. If you wanna check out all of the videos from today's YouTube collaboration, there will be a playlist below. Y'all, I took a peek at the list. There are some rock star names on there that you're definitely going to want to go and follow. And if you want to be part of the Organized HQ Live Conference, all the information on how to do that will be down there below. I hope you're having a fantastic day whatever you're doing. I hope you're finding joy. Please subscribe if you like this video and make sure you give it a big thumbs up. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.